class. I just wanted to do a little podcast to remind you how to do standard deviations. I think a lot of you know how to do this, but whenever you calculate an average, you should have the variance around that average. Um, this is really helpful. Um, you can see right away if there's going to be significant differences between two populations because if their variances are overlapping then really there's no difference in their averages. Um, but it is a little tricky sometimes in Excel to do the right standard error bar for an average. So here's a sample data set. I just kind of made these numbers up. But these are the breathing rates of sprinters after a race from South Lakes and sprinters from Oakton. I think I have seven different sprinters. So first I have to calculate an average. And keep in mind this would be analogous to your experiments with repeated trials. And whenever you have repeated trials you want to be graphing your averages. You don't want to graph your raw data. Everybody wants to see your raw data in a say a table form but we really don't want to have see that as um, in a graph. You want to do your averages. Okay, so I like to organize my spreadsheet. Notice there's no blank cells between my columns because Excel has a really hard time with blank cells. I'm going to calculate my averages here, so I've already had a, have a box set up for it. Just to remind you how you do this, you go to Formulas. Um, I go to More Functions. Now there are other ways of doing this. This is my way. I go to Average. I want to average these numbers right here, so I highlight them and I hit OK. There's my average for this sample population. OK, now I want an average over here for this sample population. Again, I've organized my spreadsheet. I know where my average is going to go. I go to More Functions, Statistical, Average, Highlight, OK. All right, so there are my averages. Now I want to calculate the standard deviation, that is the variance around those averages. Okay, so again, I've organized my spreadsheet. I want to put it here. I go to More Functions, Statistical, scroll down to Standard Deviation, and there are a couple of different choices. I believe the most appropriate one is going to be this one because this is the standard deviation for a sample. I do not have an entire population. I have a sample population. Um, so I'm doing standard deviation of a sample. This is my sample. Okay, and then I hit OK. All right, so there's my standard deviation. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Oopsies. Go to More Functions, Statistical, Standard Deviation. Highlight my sample. Hit OK. All right. Okay, so here are my standard deviations. And now to graph it, remember I just want to graph my averages. Um, since I, since this, these are categories, the best thing to do for categories would be to do a column or a bar graph. So I'm going to go here. Uh, one thing you should know, even though the 3Ds look pretty cool, you cannot put an error bar in Excel, at least on a 3D bar. So don't hit this option if you're going to do standard error bars. And if you're graphing an average, you should be doing a standard deviation bar. You're going to get um, marked down if you don't. There's really no excuse. It, but again, if you have counts, if you're um, uh, graphing changes over time, things that are not averages, please don't try to calculate a standard error. You're only going to do that if you have an average. Okay, so I'm clicking this. Oopsies. I didn't highlight my data. Okay, so I want a bar. This is my data. Back up. That's what I'm graphing my averages. Insert column bar graph. All right, so there are my averages. This is a terrible scale that Excel did. These numbers are ridiculous. This amount of precision wasn't in the initial data set, and I don't want these hundredths here. So I'm going to rescale that axis. So I go to Layout, Axes, Vertical, and I'm going to go to Options. I'm going to change the Excel minimum from this to um, 
let's say 40 and the maximum I'll put it about 55 say. okay um, I don't need this I'm deleting this also just to let you know you really want to have axes titles so these units were this was breathing rate it was breaths per minute okay um, I should also have a title title would be here oh no, I'm sorry here um, I think above the chart looks better um, let's see um, breathing rate of sprinters from two area high schools and actually this is the average so average breathing rate of sprinters from two area high schools and you shouldn't use a number like that okay all right I could probably clean up that title a little bit that's not a great title um, I also need to label these bars I would get rid of the numbers down there um, I would probably insert a text box to label this South lakes and again I'm sure many of you could make this graph a lot prettier than this I mostly just want to show you the error bars um, but keep in mind something that I see a lot is that students will do colors and I'm sure it looks very pretty at home but if you're printing on a black and white printer and if you email it to me the only printer that I have is a black and white printer the colors won't show up so please make sure that um, you're using colors that people can actually see and distinguish. Um, since I have a black and white printer, I often will just use grayscale for my graphs. Okay, so now standard error bars. Here's here's the tricky part. So you want to go again to layout. I want to highlight the bars. I want error bars plus and minus. So it's the average plus or minus your standard deviation. So you go over here to error bars. I'm putting in the error, the standard deviations that I calculated. These default ones that Excel gives you are, are meaningless. So go to options. Both is what I want. It's plus or minus the, the standard deviation. Custom. Specify value. They're my values right there, so I highlighted them. And it's plus and minus, so I gotta do this bottom one as well. Hit OK, close, and there are those error bars. Okay, now obviously looking at this data set, the conclusion that you would make is that there is no difference between the average breathing rate of the sprinters from South Lakes versus Oakton. The standard deviations overlap completely, the averages are almost the same, there's no difference there. Um, the more repeated trials that you have, the smaller your variance will probably be. So for instance, here's another data set over here. If I had fewer repeated trials um, calculating the averages and the standard deviation, the standard deviation is going to be much greater, okay, because I have fewer trials. Alright, so hopefully that was a refresher on how to do standard deviations.